We're just seeing this this kind of explosion of rabbits all across Southern California. With LMU listed at number 12 on Princeton's list of most beautiful college campuses, students and staff can't be the only ones hopping to the bluff. LMU has become home to quite a few members of the animal kingdom, such as the Foley Ducks and the Bluff Bunnies. Often seen grazing in fields, the rabbits of LMU are quite peaceful creatures. On the LMU campus, as we are seeing across uh, Southern California, we're seeing an increase in the rabbit population. You know, they're, they're, they're brush rabbits. They're a subspecies of cottontail. They're, they're small. I mean, they weigh less than two pounds. Rabbits have the kind of ecology where they can reproduce very, very quickly. And they, and they go through what we call in wildlife ecology, boom and bust cycles. So their populations go up really quickly if there's food available, and then the populations crash really quickly. But they're, they, you know, they persist over time because they're able to go through these fluctuations in population. And so we've hit this moment where we finally, after 16 years, uh, had a really rainy winter which produce lots of vegetation, which means there's lots of food for adult rabbits, which means they're going to have lots of offspring. For what evolutionary or biological reasons might the rabbits want to call LMU their home? LMU is, is, has less predator pressure than you would find, say, in the Biona wetlands or some of the other areas where coyotes would be at higher densities and some of the other pred uh, predatory animals would be at higher densities. So to a rabbit, um, LMU is a little bit like a refuge. It's a pretty nice place to be. There are water resources there. There's, there's all these gardens. There's all this uh, maintained green space, which you don't see as much of in other parts of the city. And because of the, the intensive management of the green spaces, there tends to be less disease risk for the rabbits. Are there any additional stressors that may be placed on the bunnies due to living alongside college students? Well, I think for the most part, rabbits are, are uh, uh, pretty synanthropic, which means they get along with humans because we're not hunting them, we're not trapping them. And so uh, they kind of ignore us and go about their business. Do you think all the bunnies on campus are part of the same colony? So no, they, they might be uh, re distantly related to one another, but they don't generally form really organized social groups that you would think of like with highly social animals like dolphins. When there are areas that there's a really abundant food supply, you'll see larger numbers of rabbits foraging, but they're not all from one family. Generally, when animals form either flocks or schools or whatever the term you want to use, depending on the species, they do it as a way to protect themselves from predators. As for the bunnies on the bluff, we noticed them running down the side of the hill when startled. Could this be where their warren is? And how big do you think these underground networks span? Yeah, and depending on the soil conditions, depending on how much other competition is, you know, they an individual rabbit might be foraging over a couple of acres of land uh, or even more. But but when the resources are as rich as they are here, they, they tend not to move all that much because they don't have to. Does the amount of pesticides that LMU uses on its flora weren't concerned for the bunnies' diets? We actively um, suppress small mammal populations on campus, you know, mice and rats and things like that with pesticides. I'm not sure um, how that affects the rabbits, but we know that it affects the rabbits less than it would other small rodents. What can LMU students do to live in harmony with the campus wildlife? There's a tendency among us, and it comes from a very good place in our heart. We see these animals, we find them adorable or interesting, and we want to try and do direct intervention in their lives somehow by putting food out for them or something like that. There are certain species in which that's probably okay, but it's generally not a good idea to train wildlife to become dependent on humans. And now we might modify the habitat or something like that, but this kind of direct communicative interaction between humans and wildlife often results in the wildlife, the individual members of wildlife community becoming too friendly, and then they have to be trapped and removed and euthanized. But the best overall strategy is 
to appreciate nature, the animals in nature at a distance. Don't harass them. Don't try to modify their behavior. Just appreciate and feel blessed to live in a rich and complex environment.